your departure at onsite. Let's talk about that. Okay, so you were involved with onsite for quite quite some time, yeah. Like I would say a good five plus years, six years maybe. Uh yeah, you were there every day on the ground. Uh okay, before we talk about your departure, let's talk about operations. So like I think from an outsider point of view, uh what some of us know is that there was a lot of uh like how do you call it? Shenanigans? Yeah, you can call it shenanigans, uh, yeah. With uh specifically with the setters. Yeah, and then like K was too uh like the like the like the struggles of the operations at on site. Why 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 did certain things turn out the way it seemed? And then what led to your departure after that? You know? Yeah. So depending on who you speak to, uh, the perspectives is all different for what happened in 2015. So just a bit of background. 2015, at one point, four people left the company in succession, in close succession. Uh, so that being Hasli, Sik, Sean and Human. Mm. Like I said, people will have a different impression of who is wrong, who is right. And I will state for the record that I think both parties have some part to play in that. Uh, there's definitely things I can improve on and some parts um, I would apologize to Sean Human and Sik on the record, on TV, on, on video, um, that I could have done things better, uh, but not to Hasli. Just for you guys who don't know, right? So like, these are the staff that were on site. Um, Hasli, Sean, and Human were the setters at on site for quite a long time. And then Sig was the operations manager, right? I mean, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So like for those of you who don't know, these are the like the other staff, lah. So uh, we are on the topic of um, boss and staff relationships at the gym. No? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, yeah. So we can move on. So I would say that back then as a so-called general manager, I lacked the experience and empathy to understand that people work differently. And what I feel is best for them is actually not the best for them because we are all operating on different frequencies. I would say I've grown. Uh, I, I've learned, hopefully I've learned that I, something that I can do better like, following on. Mm. And then after they left, you guys got new setters, Derry and things like that. Mm. And then what happened from that point on to the point that you left slash got kicked or something? I don't know. I'm not quite sure either. Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, after the the exodus uh, exodus of the four guys, the gym actually did better. So I was a lot more busy with Sus, we were setting a lot. Um, but we sort of brought back the setting to more human level, mortal levels. Because it got to a point where, I mean, there was a lot of uh, antagonism with the setters. And I was telling them it's too hard and they're telling me I'm too weak. So I'm like, I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm not strong for sure, not as strong as those guys. Uh, but. The reality is, after me and Sus took over, um, actually more people came to the gym. The business got better. But that's that. And then, moving on to 2017, if some of you may recall, there's this uh, online website called RSB, Rock Stock Barrel. So, my initiative helped a lot by Derek. Um, and we got it off to a good start because no one was doing online retail for climbing equipment. Uh, it's a niche and I believe that if we do it well, we can expand it to the Southeast Asia market because e-commerce doesn't restrict you to any region. Uh, what 
happened was that the, the main company decided that it's a good venture and they would like a piece of it, which is fine. And I'm willing to share. I uh, said, on site, 50%, you 50%. So am I right to say that RSB was an on site initiative? Yeah, purely on site initiative. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, naturally, then CA will have that percentage of whatever the on site is involved with or starts, out, right? Yeah, 33% to be exact. Okay. Okay. Then, but. Also, oh, like they're asking for more, lah, which is like 50 50. No, <laughs> they wanted everything. I offered 50 50. Oh, they wanted everything. Yeah, so okay. even at 50 50, right, um, what will happen is that even if, let's say, Climb Asia has 50%, on site 50%, but due to the fact that Climb Asia has 33% on site, they will have a majority. I see. Which I uh, find there's really enough money to be made in the world. Um, that's not something they want. And that's where I decided maybe this is not the company to work for. So RSB was the thing that put, that like tore it apart? Ah. Yep. Because back then, I already have a vertical integration plan to go into providing root setting services, even going to manufacturing handholds, panels, building walls, the whole shebang. Uh, I gave them a skeleton plan of what I intend to do. And I believe that, but I will believe that if I carry out all these things, and at the end of the day, using a majority versus minority kind of play, um, it will just get bitten off. Parts of it will just get bitten off. And that's when I decided, now I'm out of here. Hmm, okay. So, okay, like this one, I don't know if it's true or not. But you want a majority share in on-site, right? Yes. Because you wanted, like this skeleton plan that you're talking about, like you wanted autonomy over what was going on, lah, right? Yep. And then it just didn't work out, lah, basically. Yeah, they didn't want to sell, so like, I sold. Lah. It's okay. simple as that. Okay, so if you don't want to give that, I'll give, lah, right? Then. No. And then, and then you went on to um, start Feedlock. Yep. Yeah, uh, was, it, was it a good change for you, in terms of? setting the gym up, being more familiar with the operations, things like that. And the people that you're working with in particular. Um, actually, I'm always familiar with the operation because uh, day in, day out, on site until 2017, where it grew to where it is, uh, it's always been myself heading the, the team. Uh. So, fit block is not refreshing in terms of the usual, you know, building a wall, putting the mattress in, root setting, pretty standard. Uh, what was refreshing is that we are providing something that's more than just climbing. And it may sound easy now, you may think, oh, people is successful, people are going there, it's a very nice environment. But back then, if you are the one starting it, you'll be thinking, oh, damn, this is so far away, this is so inaccessible, will people come? Yeah. Uh, is this fine. really what people want? This yeah. nice environment to see it and work. Uh, is that not what the hardcore climber wants? So we are targeting the not hardcore climbers, but will they come? Uh, I guess that sort of answered itself like, in the in the years to come. Mm. And it was the first of its kind, like, right? Like before that, we never really the closest thing we had yes, was Boulder Plaza. Movement. But Boulder Movement doesn't really have a place to sit down and. And it's not nearly, like, if you talk about, like, scale, then it's not nearly as big, la, you know. It's not that, as big as an, of an if investment. If you talk about scale, yeah, but the kind of trajectory and the uh, kind of market that we are gunning for, it's similar, I guess. Okay. Okay, then, uh, so, uh, from our conversations just now, this is where you see, uh, the balance of profitability and scalability comes in the climbing business, right? So it's to cater to those uh, beginner climbers. And uh, do you think that would be, in a way, counterproductive to growing the sport? Because what grows the sport is athletic performance. At the, at the very, very top of it, right? At the apex of it, right? Is 
when, when the national team does well, funding comes in, schools start, start, like, start like, climbing, increases participation, like you said, and then the sport goes as a whole. And then there's the other end of it where it comes from like walk-ins, just like random people come and try and then like, oh, like this is quite fun, right? Yeah. So then if everyone starts a gym catering to the beginners because of money, then aren't the better, like the more, like the national athletes are basically, yeah, like, aren't they left out at the end of the day? Okay, your, your question is very long. So I need to break it down a bit. Uh, so to the point where you're saying that the national athletes team, the national team's performance lends well to a bustling community, right? Yeah. I would say that Indonesia points the other way. They are doing quite well. They, have, they are doing quite excellent, but there are, there's not too many climbing gyms in Indonesia. I think Indonesia and Singapore can't be compared like that now. Because? I mean, that rounds counterpoint to your example of excellence equates a bustling uh, industry. So that's that. Uh, and the other interesting counterpoint is that uh, you mentioning that gyms are all catering towards uh, beginners. Mm. Actually, I do feel after the on-site close that there is a market for hardcore climbers. There is? I think there is. If you build a lead wall, the scale of on-site or better, uh, I think people will come. The problem right now, right, and is endemic in all the industries, businesses trying to make it, small businesses, SMEs, is that rent as a component of your cost is very high. Mm. I think the point has been de belabored, but just to make it clear, it's like I would want to pay employees more, I want to pay root setters more, but you manage all these things put into the whole picture, right? Rent as a component of cost is very high, and that takes away what you can afford to pay your staff. So for something like on-site to rise again, right, you need to find a space like the old Vemington Hall again because the rent is affordable. That's why you can build something hardcore and still be able to manage the rent and the resources. And to make it accessible to... And to make it accessible, yeah. So a very clear reason why more people are going to bouldering is that the capex is lower, capex, capital expenditure, you spend less to study it up. For the same amount of space, you can have a lot more people bouldering than if they are all doing lead climbing. Lead climbing operationally, OPEX, is your cost is higher because uh, route setting is diffi more difficult. You have equipment to maintain, you have ropes, you have uh, hangers, you have safety, you need to check. So, unless people are willing to pay more to lead climb uh, or unless companies are able to through the support of uh, Sports SG to get a site that the rent is manageable uh, if not it can be a bit difficult so you don't see many more climbing gyms based around high walling in the near future no. 